Welcome to a hey Math Group. In this video, we're going to learn the relationship between risk and return. So let's say that you have $100 and you want to invest all this money. Well, you decide to go to the bank and ask the guy that is working at the bank where you should put your money. He tells you, look, I have a stock A and I have a stock B. Basically, you can put your $100 either here or here. However, you need to understand that the economy can be good, can be average, or it can be bad. The probability that this can happen is going to be 45% that is good, 40% that is average, and there's a 15% probability that there's going to be a bad economy, which that's actually pretty good. So, you have different scenarios. For example, just concentrate on this area here. This is a stock A and this is a probability. There is a 45% probability you're going to have a 15% return. A 40% probability you're going to have only an 8% return. And if the economy is really bad, you will actually lose money because you have a negative 11%. Now, a stock B is that if you have a good economy, it's 16% uh, return. 40% probability on an average economy that you're going to get a 9%. And if you have a bad economy, you can actually lose money because look, it's a negative 13%. It is very important you understand here that the probability can never be negative. However, the return can be negative because you can lose money. So when you have problems like this, your probability always has to add up up to one. However, the return can be positive or negative. Awesome. So you ask yourself, well, which one is better, a stock A or a stock B? This is when you're going to go ahead and calculate the expected return. We're going to calculate the expected return of each stock, A and B. The one that has the highest expected return is the one that's going to give you the most money. How do I do that? Okay. So it's very easy. Obviously, the bigger the problem, the more the calculations. But I just wanted to do like a simple problem. And then I'm going to create another video with a little bit more complicated numbers. And we're going to do this in Excel because by hand is very tedious. But look how easy. We're going to go ahead and multiply the probability by the return. And then I'm going to add all that up. So look what I'm doing. 0.45 times 0.15 plus 0.40 times 0.08, and then plus 0.15 times yes, negative 0.11. So as you can see here, even though I have a negative here, I just still put it because remember, you have a probability of losing money. So basically, you just multiply the probability times the return and add all that up. And look what you're going to get. You're going to get this, and then I multiply it by 100, and it tells me that with all these probabilities, most likely I'm going to get an 8.3%. Awesome. Let's do the same with return B. Look what I'm doing. 0.45 times 6, 0.16. Basically, I just make everything into decimals. 0.40 times 0 0.09. 0 0.15 times negative 0.13. And voila, I get 8.85%. Awesome. I can figure it out that return B is actually the best investment. However, I'm very excited with my $100 and the guy tells me, oh, ho, hold on. You need to figure out how much risk you're going to have. Because remember, anytime you have a return, you're going to have a risk. So how do I measure risk? Well, in order to determine the risk, we're going to figure out the standard deviation. This will tell me the percentage of risk that I'm going to have. So the formula is a pain in the neck not to say the other word, but not impossible. So look what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and do this whole formula, which is going to be the probability times, and then you put a parenthesis, 0.15, which is the return A, minus the expected return we just calculated. Look, I'm putting everything in decimals because that way it's easier. You're going to go ahead and do the first thing you're going to do is 0 0.15 minus 0 0.083. Then you're going to square that. And then you're going to do times 45. You're going to do it with every single one. Look at this. 0 0.40 and then 0 0.08 minus. Remember, this is the return you just got. 0 0.083 squared 
plus 15 and then log minus 0.11 minus the expected return square. All of this is going to go ahead and give me this number. Finally, I'm going to do the square root because before I just had the variance. But when you do the square root of the variance, you find the standard deviation. Yes, and we get that my risk is 8.7%. We're going to do the same with return B. I never said this was going to be an easy calculation. They're a pain in the freaking neck. But we're going to do an Excel um, um, video next time so we can do all this in Excel and make it, you know, make it easier. Again, I'm going to do 0.45 times 0.16 minus. This is the rate of return, the expected return that I got from the, um, you know, stock B square. And I'm going to do all this math. And finally, I get this number. I do the square root and voila, I get 9.7%. Finally, I can, I can conclude the higher the risk, the higher the return. It makes sense. If you're making something that has a lot of risk, most likely you're going to have return. But, you know, if you want something with a lower risk, you're going to have uh, probably a lower return. So these are the important points. The expected return will calculate the return of one single stock. And the standard deviation is going to calculate the risk. Let me tell you. Once you do these problems in Excel, they're very, very easy. Thank you so much for doing such an amazing job. Please don't forget to watch our other videos. And also, thanks so much for learning.